Okay, so we have discarded, we've drawn our recruitments, we've determined the initiative. Now the Tokugawa won the initiative bid, but do they want to go first or do they want to go second? Uh, in this case, let's just say that they want to go first. There are times when you will want to go second. You have to really look carefully at the overall strategic picture before you make that call. So let's say they want to go first here. Um, let's have them play aggressive and discard a card. They're already up one on their opponent. So let's discard a card here. And that will allow us three moves. And let's look at our recruitment pool because we're going to need to muster some blocks here um, because there's a big stack bearing down here on them. And we can recruit these flowery dudes there. So let's take one of our moves and muster these two blocks into that stack. Now that's two moves remaining. By the way, if you discard two of your cards, you can move all of your stacks and recruit as much as you want. But that is a very expensive thing to do to discard two cards. Um, two more stacks to move. Try to decide which blocks to bring on. Let's go ahead and actually we can throw that one in there too because it matches the Mon. Let's go ahead and get as much of our money's worth as possible. This is actually a bluff because we don't really have the cards to control these guys, but my opponent doesn't know that. So I'm actually going to stick a bunch in here since we can recruit two of them there. Leaving two blocks in there, we want to maneuver with one of these stacks. Let's go ahead and try a siege. And let's see if I can pull this off. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think we can. Let's go ahead and pull off a siege. What we're going to do is we're going to march this block, this stack here, one space into uh, Izu and try to take the castle by siege. Now, your opponent, if you have more than two blocks in a castle location, you must fight a field battle. If you have less than uh, two or less cubes in or uh, blocks in a uh, castle location, you can choose to duck behind the walls of a castle and force your opponent into a siege. Now, in a siege, the attacker never takes losses. His only loss in the siege is the time it's going to take to undertake it. So, looking at the uh, the Ishida cards, he doesn't have the cards to control these two uh, blocks. If I had two of these Uswegi um, cards, um, I, would, I would probably try to fight a field battle here. But in this case, I don't, so I'm going to duck behind the walls. And here we'll have our first siege. In a siege, only the attacker is going to play cards and deploy blocks. Here's how it works. First block I'm going to do is going to be my leader for one impact. And I'm doing that one because it doesn't cost me a card. Loyalty challenges are not useful in a siege. Um, they're only useful in field battles, by the way. All right, so we're going to reveal that block. Next, I'm going to reveal this card here. And that'll bring out this block. And that will give us one, two, three impact with a bonus of one because we've already played a block uh, matching that same mod. So now we're up to here, up to five. And then lastly, I'm going to play this card. This is the last card I have in my hand that I can play to deploy a block. To deploy this one, that's going to give me two more for a total of seven. In a siege, the defender loses one block for every seven impacts scored against him by the attacker. So the attacker basically just keeps playing cards to, to try to, to rack up as much impact as possible to end the siege quickly. In this case, he's only going to kill one of the two blocks, and it's up to the Ishido player which one they want to kill. Let's go ahead and take the Arquebus one and destroy that. So he's gone. The siege continues, which means Ishida still controls the castle. Now, at the end of a siege... The attacking player is going to be able to redraw a number of cards that were used in the battle. So he's going to get two cards back. These two are now discarded. And pleasantly enough, now they have one of these flowery uh, uh, made guys. So now they actually can control at least one of these blocks that they deployed. And then lastly, then the defender in a battle situation draws one card for every block that they lost. Well, Ashita lost one uh, block, so they're going to draw one card. So now that opens up some new options for the Ishida player. And then the play will then pass to the Ishida side. So does anyone have any questions about sieges? It's kind of interesting that in this game, sieges are actually simpler than field battles. They're, they're real straightforward. 
the siege situation will be maintained here until either uh, the Tokugawa player moves his blocks out of there or the last Ishida block is destroyed. Now in the case of this location here at Ueda, it's a castle with a disc. The disc counts kind of as a block. It doesn't count as a block as far as drawing cards after the siege is over with, but you don't actually capture the castle until you kill that disc. So even if you've killed all the blocks there, you have to still kill the disc in order to capture that particular location. So yeah, we got a bunch of Mori in the um, sheet of player's hand, and because he's going second, it might be a good idea to buy some of these Mori guys out. Um, really what I'd like to do is capture a castle and try to even the odds up here a little bit. So I'm thinking maybe try to take on, uh, take one of these castles out. Let's see what cards I can control. I can get, uh, four or five out of that. That's not going to do it though. If I take this bunch here at, um, Kuwana. I don't want to get trapped and open. See, if I leave this location, take this whole crowd down here, try to take out this uh, castle, I leave the road open to the Tokugawa blocks. So I don't want to take the whole crowd there. So I'm going to pick out what blocks I would move to try to take out the castle. Um, and I don't think I have enough impact to do it. I'd have to play one, two. Actually, I do have enough. If I took him, him, and him, and him. I would have enough to do it. So let's go ahead and actually just do a minimum move here because I want to be able to burn some of these cards to buy some reinforcements here. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take this card or this stack here. We just kind of split it apart. We're going to move it out of here and into this location. That's going to be our only move. And again, we have a siege situation. But here's how I'm going to resolve it. I'm actually going to take this card here and deploy this block. I'm then going to take, well, actually let me back up. Let me reset all these cubes. All right, actually well, let's start off with this leader here. Uh, let's see, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, I'm gonna reveal my uh, Ashida leader, first of all. Then I'm gonna play this card to reveal that block. So that's a total of four between those two blocks. That's four impact so far. Then I'm going to play this card here to reveal this block, and that's going to be one more plus a bonus of one because we've already played a card with that one. So it's two more. And then lastly, we'll play a Mori card, this one, to reveal the Mori block, and that gives us our seventh impact, and that's going to be enough to kill that block and take the castle. And the castle will be ours as long as we stay in that location with the yellow block. So I'm going to take that stack and put them in there. So we have control of that castle now. And I'm going to draw one, two, three cards for Ishida. There we go. Three cards for Ishida, and Tokugawa is going to get one because they lost one block. So one, two, and three. Now I've got some cards to control that other. Now here's where, here's where I could have gambled. I could have actually gambled and maybe moved uh, three stacks and taken some of these guys up to try to take out this castle at the same time. Um, but I, I chose to play it a little bit more cautiously because I didn't know what I was going to draw. You actually draw your cards immediately after the battle and that could actually impact another battle that you're about to fight in the same turn. Now, look at my cards. I got two, four, six, seven for Tokugawa and two, four, five, six, seven for Mori. Because I went last and I evened up the, the number of castles under the control, I think I'm, I'm safe now going ahead and discarding one of these cards here to get an additional Mori and put him into Osaka from the Mori box. And that will then end the turn. And so the play will then go on to the next turn and then go through the whole weekly cycle, discard half your cards, draw five more, and so forth. So even though maybe it looks like you have a real strong hand after a turn, remember you have to discard half of them and you don't know what you're going to draw. So there's so much uncertainty um, going into the next weekly round. Really, you can set up your best attacks, I think, on the B turn because of you know what you do on the A turn. You can set yourself up for a, a devastating blow on the B turn. 
Um, just for grins, let's set up a monster battle here so I can show you what some of these uh, some of these special things on the cards can do. So let me just set up a hypothetical monster battle situation.